The fallopian tubes are extensions of the womb muscle that lie very close to each of your ovaries. Each tube receives an egg as it is released from the ovary at ovulation. And part of the job of the tube is to transport the egg by gentle movements along its path to meet any sperm if you've had sex recently. The fallopian tube is the most common site of fertilization because sperm will travel up from the vagina through into the womb to meet the mature egg and that is where fertilization most commonly happens. It is thought that 25 to 30 percent of female infertility problems happen because of tubal problems or tubal blockage that is a blockage of the fallopian tube so this video looks at fallopian tube blockage and how you can get pregnant with blocked fallopian tubes Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia, a consultant in general practice. Welcome to Ask Away Health. What are the causes of blocked fallopian tube? Infection is the most common cause of a blockage in the fallopian tube. It is most often as a result of a pelvic inflammatory disease which develops following a sexually transmitted infection, although tube blockage can happen from infections that are not transmitted sexually. If the problem is caused by a sexually transmitted infection, chlamydia and gonorrhea are the most often Often implicated. The more often you have a pelvic inflammatory disease and the more severe it is, the greater the risk of infertility. One study demonstrated that the pregnancy rates following PID were 89% after one episode, 77% after two episodes, and 46% after three episodes. In terms of PID severity, mild, moderate, and severe, the live birth rates were 90% for mild PID, 82% for moderate PID, and 57% for severe PID. Acute and chronic inflammation of the tubes can make them swollen or blocked with fluid. This is a condition known as hydrosalpinx. This problem is associated with reduced fertility and it also affects the womb lining in such a way that it's unable to support a pregnancy. The structure of the tubes can also be damaged leading to blockage. Damage can happen to the structure of the tubes from this problem as well as from issues like scarring or adhesions that develop after surgery. This damage can lead to the tubes getting blocked and the process of inflammation on and off can lead to the tubes getting scarred another reason for blockage. In addition to sexually transmitted infections and PID, fallopian tubes can also be blocked by conditions like endometriosis, fibroids, an ectopic pregnancy, or even a previous surgery within the abdomen or pelvis that can cause adhesions. Adhesions are pieces of tough scar tissue that can arise in the abdomen or pelvis, usually after surgery or infection, which can also lead to blockage of the tube. So now let's look at how to get pregnant if you have blocked fallopian tubes. This depends on where the blockage has happened on the tube and if you have one or both tubes blocked. So first, the tube can be blocked at the end that is nearest the womb. This is the proximal end. And some specialists say that this is often easier to treat. Sometimes a spasm of the tube, remember it's made of muscle, can make it kink, leading to a blockage that can be removed or resolved during an HSG or the dye x-ray test that we use to diagnose blocked tubes. But in other cases, something is blocking the inside of the tube. And sometimes it may be possible to resolve this by dislodging the blockage without resorting to advanced or extensive surgery. And we'll talk about this in a little bit in this video. On the other hand, a block may happen on the far side of the tube, that is the distal part close to the ovary. And a block in this location will usually require surgery. If you have blocked fallopian tubes, there are usually no symptoms to indicate the problem. And the condition can be detected using different tests. For example, I just mentioned the HSG dye test, which is also known as the hysterosalpingogram dye test. It's a special x-ray test that allows doctors to see if dye that is inserted via the vagina into the womb spills out of the tubes telling us whether they are functioning normally. But you could also have something called a high C test. This is a hysterocontrast 
salpingogram and it's basically instead of x-rays in this case we're using ultrasound and foam applied within the womb and the fallopian tubes the foam can show up clearly on ultrasound and so give us an indication of whether or not the tubes are working okay however the best form of diagnosis is using keyhole surgery or performing a laparoscopy this is when a thin tube with a high resolution camera at its end is passed through small cuts around your belly button or umbilicus this allows the doctor to look into the pelvis and gather information about organs within the area and how healthy or not the pelvis is at the same time they can also introduce dye using other little cuts around the pelvis and the abdomen and they can use this to see if the tubes are working so that's how blocked fallopian tubes are diagnosed so what options do you have for pregnancy let's consider can you get pregnant naturally with a blocked or blocked fallopian tubes if both tubes are blocked the natural pregnancy is unlikely if one tube is blocked Falling pregnant naturally is possible as long as the other tube is healthy. It is true that the overall chance of pregnancy happening is lower, but it's still possible and sometimes with some assistance. If you fall into this category, some of the important actions that you should take are avoiding stress, using relaxation techniques, meditation or breathing exercises on a regular basis, having regular unprotected sex and taking pregnancy supporting supplements, for example, folic acid and myo-inositol are important. Stop smoking and avoid alcohol altogether. Some people recommend something called manual physical therapy. This is where a therapist treats blocked tubes by manipulating or massaging the tissue surrounding the tube. In a study of 28 women with blocked fallopian tubes who had this manual physical treatment, over a half of them had their tubes open successfully and a third of them went on to become pregnant naturally. However, it's a small study and we need one that's bigger to give more reliable results and indicate whether this method actually works. Some people also suggest using anti-inflammatory agents like turmeric, vitamin C, omega fatty acids for treating a blocked fallopian tube. Now, even though these supplements do have antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties, there is no evidence to suggest they can actually treat a blocked fallopian tube. So earlier I talked about assistance when trying to get pregnant naturally if you have one fallopian tube that is open, that is one blocked tube. If you're dealing with a blocked fallopian tube, some specialists can try to dislodge the blockage by inserting a thin catheter or wire through the tube during the dye test. It may be a consideration for some people. Please remember that carrying it out may increase the risk of an ectopic pregnancy affecting that particular tube. The next thing that might help in terms of having a natural pregnancy with one fallopian tube is the timing of sexual intercourse. Your doctor may be able to detect when you are ovulating on the side where your fallopian tube is open and working properly. They can do this by performing scheduled ultrasound scans. So if you are aware that you're ovulating on that side, that particular period, then you can increase the number of times you and your partner have sexual intercourse, which could potentially increase the risk of fertilization and natural pregnancy. So these are some of the ways that you could naturally become pregnant with one blocked fallopian tube. Now, I know you're going to be asking, what about fertility drugs? Well, yeah, fertility drugs certainly have a role. They increase the chances of ovulation from the ovaries. And because more or multiple eggs are likely to be produced when you ovulate thanks to the fertility drugs, this also increases the chance of them being fertilized and of pregnancy but please bear in mind of course the possibility of multiple pregnancies so, so twins triplets and so on with this process so we've talked about fertility drugs what about surgery well surgery is an option when the blockage happens towards the distal part of the tube which is near the ovary like i mentioned earlier another example where surgery is really the only way is where the blockage 
um, has been caused by previous surgery for example if you would had your tubes tied in the past or if you had an ectopic pregnancy and the tube was repaired after the ectopic pregnancy was removed next of course there is IVF or in vitro fertilization and this is an option where both tubes are blocked and surgery is not going to work or surgery is unlikely to work in this case it means that both natural fertilization and implantation are not possible so IVF which essentially means fertilization the egg outside the body with the sperm and then introducing it back into your womb will be an option for you to have a baby so women also ask about supplements like serapeptase and mucinex and using it to unblock fallopian tube serapeptase is a protein enzyme it's been around for several years it's been thought to help reduce swelling for example dental swelling inflammation and pain and in the past it was also supposed to be helpful for dissolving blood clots in blood vessels in our arteries many of these claims have yet to be confirmed by reliable studies so the reliance on serapeptase is really based on people's personal experiences and this also goes for people who think that because it could be used to dissolve a clot perhaps it could also dissolve a blockage in the fallopian tube there is no reliable evidence that we have from studies that serapeptase does this it's usually more personal experiences which of course may not work for everybody and what is mucinex you've probably used mucinex at some point for a bad cold it contains a substance called guaifenesin and this helps with blocked nose by thinning the mucus and so the idea of using mucinex to help with fertility ovulation and blocked tubes is that if it can unblock the nose by thinning the mucus perhaps it can do something similar with the cervical mucus or even a blocked fallopian tube again the reports that we have about this to date are anecdotal and there are no reliable studies performed so far to indicate how true any experience of pregnancy after using mucinex is actually as a result of the drug alone and this is why it is not recommended so these are some of the things that could be done if a woman has blocked fallopian tubes please remember it is not a specific approach for any one person this information is educational and i recommend you speak with your doctor to do a full fertility workup for yourself and your partner and identify the best option for treating you specifically but let me know what you think of these measures i've discussed here down in the comment section and if you want to learn Learn more about any of the topics I've covered in this video then please send an email to our email health information service check out other videos in my how to get pregnant series don't forget to give this video a like and of course share with a friend consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you again soon